day four of the Steve Bannon indictment watch. Let's count down the days together. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So we are on the Steve Bannon indictment watch. We will be counting down the days today and every day to see how long it takes for the Department of Justice to indict Steve Bannon for contempt of Congress. Because we know that Congress voted to hold Bannon in contempt and they referred him to the Department of Justice for a prosecution. Here is how NBC News reported that out. House asks DOJ to criminally prosecute Trump advisor Steve Bannon for refusing to comply with January 6th committee. And we know that Steve Bannon was referred for prosecution to the DC U.S. Attorney's Office. And here is a tweet from our friend Scott McFarlane announcing just that. Alert. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia received the referral letter on October 21st, 2021 from the House of Representatives regarding Steve Bannon. So last Thursday, October 21st, is when the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office received the criminal referral from Congress. And we actually know the precise minute that the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office received that criminal referral, according to some CNN reporting. The House's Steve Bannon referral arrived at the U.S. Attorney's Office today at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, according to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. So now we have to ask the question, how long will it take? How long do we the people have to wait until the Department of Justice indicts Steve Bannon for the crime he inarguably committed. How long justice? Well, the good news, friends, is there is precedent. There is precedent on this precise issue. It's historical precedent, actual precedent, practical precedent, because this issue has been confronted before. Now, we all know how judges love precedent. And I'm going to assume that Attorney General Merrick Garland appreciates precedent because we know he was a judge for nearly a quarter of a century before being nominated to be Attorney General by President Biden. And judges live and breathe precedent every day. You know, some might say that Merrick Garland is still adjusting from his role as a judge to being a prosecutor again, which is what he is in a very real sense as attorney general. But the good news is we have precedent on precisely this issue. So enter a woman named Rita Lavelle, a Ronald Reagan era EPA official. She was given a summons, a, a subpoena to appear before Congress, and she flat out refused to appear and testify. What happened next to Ms. Lavelle? Well, here is how the Washington Post reported it out in 1983. House finds Rita Lavelle in contempt. Date, May 19th, 1983. And the next article, friends, in the Washington Post Lavelle indicted by grand jury on contempt of Congress charge. And the date of that article, May 28th, 1983. That article reads in part, a federal grand jury yesterday, so now that would be May 27th, indicted former EPA official Rita Lavelle for contempt of Congress for refusing to testify before a House subcommittee investigating her management of EPA's hazardous waste cleanup fund. So friend, friends, the two important dates there are Congress refers Ms. Lavelle for prosecution on May 18th and nine days later, 
on May 27th, 1983, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia, has a grand jury indict Ms. Lavelle for contempt of Congress. It took just nine days. Nine days from contempt referral by Congress to indictment. That is precedent. It's not precedent as if an appellate court issued an opinion, but it's historical precedent. It's actual precedent. It shows how this precise issue has been handled previously, how it can be addressed in a timely manner. It proves that justice need not be delayed. Nine days. We're on day four. Congress referred Steve Bannon for a criminal contempt prosecution just four days ago. But the Rita Lavelle precedent proves that the Department of Justice can and should promptly indict Steve Bannon. And we will be here every day on Steve Bannon Indictment Watch, counting down the days, holding DOJ accountable, drawing some justice lines in the sand. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.